going on there guys good evening it is the earth master here uh, on the live stream with an update video on this thursday evening there we go uh january uh, 13th is the date about 2022 about 603 p.m california time and the, the uh, latest quake on the globe a 2.5 earthquake around the northern california area you can see right there on the green flag indicating that uh, most recent earthquake Let's go ahead and check out some details out here on the latest map from the USGS, including that 2.5 around the Diablo area, Mount Diablo, 12.4 uh, kilometers for that 2.5. Also a couple other smaller earthquakes there within the vicinity. Um, Mount Diablo, of course, sits there in the Bay Area off of the fault systems here, pretty uh, dynamic fault systems, the Concord Fault, and a couple, uh, couple other ones here kind of uh, forming that uh, mountain range there called Mount Diablo. Not volcanic, but a uh, pretty cool feature in the terms of uh, geology. Uh, let's see here. A little bit of info on it. Uh, looks like about uh, 30 miles east of San Francisco. It is a result of geologic compression and uplift caused by the movements of the earth plates. Uh, the mountain lies between converging earthquake faults and continues to grow slowly. So this kind of... Uh, Kind of a cool little feature. Kind of looks like a volcano out there, but uh, definitely not volcanic in nature. Uh, moving out here to the USGS map, backing off a little bit here. You can see some movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Also a little bit of activity down in the Southern California area as well. On the Pacific side of the plate boundary here, uh, north of the Riverside area, looking at a little bit of movement around the uh, San Bernardino area sitting off the San Jacinto Fault area. Of course, down here in the southern part of the San Jacinto Fault Zone, uh, we had that pretty good swarm of movement kick up here uh, just uh, over the last 24 hours or so. Middle part looks pretty quiet tonight. The northern end showing a little bit of movement there in the uh, 2.0 range. Also just off the... Uh, off the... Uh, San, Andreas, or the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone... Kind of see a little microquake activity in between here of the uh, Elsinore, Elsinore Fault System and also the San Jacinto Fault Zone around the Palomar Mountain Observatory eastward. A little bit of microquakes kicking up there. Nothing spectacular. Uh, not a significant amount of swarming to take note of here in California at the moment. Uh, Tonopah seeing some activity also up here around the Antelope Valley or at least south of the Antelope Valley area. Uh, around the Walker and Bridgeport, California area. A couple microquakes kicking off there next to uh, Highway 395. Of course, we had that 3.3 uh, out in the, or 3.2. Looks like they downgraded it a little bit there. Off the coast of Oregon into the Gorda Ridges here. You can see those ridges formed by uh, pressure and whatnot. Uh, that's the only earthquake so far being recorded on the USGS map. Also some activity around the, uh, yeah, just south of the Eureka area. Kind of out here in the uh, Redway, California region, some microquakes kicking off. Uh, what else we got here? Pacific Northwest still remains relatively quiet. Uh, a little bit of movement up here outside of Mount St. Helens. You can see that point two little microquake there. All other volcanoes there in the Cascades and down into Northern California and the Sierras look pretty quiet. Uh, Sawtooth Fault area seen some movement and also around the Yellowstone area. A little bit of earthquake activity out there, but uh, overall, man, things just kind of uh, calming down at the moment. Uh, looking into the Gulf of Alaska, pretty quiet here. Not a whole lot of renewed movement. We are seeing some microquakes out here. Um, looks like around the Dutch Harbor area, quite a few microquakes in a little swarm fashion here. Uh, but uh, not a whole lot of movement taking place here in the large scale department. See one little earthquake, 4.2. Right smack dab in the bend here, this little zone between the Aleutian Trench and the Kuril Kamachaka Trench. This area uh, remains pretty quiet. Still, night after night, it remains relatively quiet. Uh, out here just south of Japan, a 4.1. And uh, a couple of earthquakes here in a linear fashion uh, around the Indonesia area and the Philippines region with a couple of fours kicking off. Uh, New Zealand looks uh, pretty quiet, and the Fiji Islands as well. Not a whole lot of deep movement at all being reported in that region. And uh, Middle East and areas over here look pretty quiet as well. This is an older earthquake, 4.3, in the Poland area from uh, earlier this morning. Uh, 
South America. We did see some uh, uptick in a little bit of movement along the Peru-Chile Trench earlier. We have not seen anything kick back up, though, uh, since this morning's update. Uh, looking at the Puerto Rico area as well, pretty quiet. I'm watching this 3.9 right smack dab on the Puerto Rico Trench at 37 kilometers here into the uh, Puerto Rico Trench area. And a little bit of movement off the Middle America Trench around the Guatemala and the Costa Rica area where they've seen a 4.6 inland into the uh, Middle America Trench area. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone map here real quick. There's not a whole lot uh, going on worldwide. There is some, uh, a little bit of activity up in the northwestern part of the Yellowstone area. From the Maple Creek area, looks like some uh, very, very small uh, earthquakes there occurring in the well-defined spikes. But other than that, not a whole lot going on there, folks, even at Yellowstone at the moment. Let's go ahead and check out the EMSC data just for uh, verification here. And... Um, looks about the same not a whole lot of movement looks pretty spotty even here on this map only 25 earthquakes a um, little bit of movement like I mentioned around the uh, Philippines area southward but uh, well things just kind of at a standstill at the moment here um, what else we got trimmer map I believe has came out uh, and it looks like six measly six trimmers here in the northern California just uh Wow, <laughs> it's been pretty quiet, folks, let me tell you. That's kind of at the southern end of the Cascadia uh, subduction zone there into the trimmer area, down dip, downstream, and about as far south as you can go. Maybe actually you can go a little bit further south here inland into the trimmer area. But uh, that's about it. Six trimmers in the uh, Cascadia region over the last, uh, or at least throughout the day today. The Earthquakes Canada map shows... Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can get this to pop up here. Look, looks like they're kind of slow at the moment. Not for sure what's going on with their website. All right, well, we'll skip them for tonight because it doesn't look like it's uh, popping back up there. Uh, let's see here solar weather there is see solar weather is getting a little active let's go ahead and check that out real quick uh, looks like on the 15th and the 16th now we're getting a g1 class storm uh, probability it looks like 70 percent chance on uh, the 16th there of some higher latitude uh, storming 65 percent chance on uh, the 15th so looking forward to that Looks like uh, things going to be cooking up there a little bit uh, when it comes to potentially seeing the uh, roars. Global D-layer absorption map shows uh, some heightened movement directly over the New Zealand area. Not for sure what that's about. Might want to just do a little recap on that. I'm not going to cover that too much tonight. Uh, but it's uh, kind of cool to watch when it comes to the ionosphere uh, and the uh, effects on the radio frequency and whatnot. Some people think that uh, stuff when this really ramps up can create uh well earthquakes so to speak but uh i have yet to see that be verified but uh, at least here on the map now the absorption uh, prediction uh map here shows a uh, heightened activity over the uh, australia new zealand area at the moment all right folks gonna call it uh just a short update tonight uh like i say not a whole lot going on uh still kind of just uh getting over being sick here lost my taste and uh <clears throat> my sense of smell I don't have a fever anymore but uh it's just that uh you know that that c word i think kicking around here i haven't been tested but i'm pretty pretty, pretty certain that's what i had and uh just kind of taking it easy staying inside trying to recover uh def definite symptoms of that so it is what it is, and I will continue to kick forward and move on. <clears throat> and uh, I sure hope my smell and taste comes back because uh, I enjoy food and uh, I love smelling food. So it's it's kind of a bummer. Had some bacon and eggs this morning that uh, Missy Mimi's uh, cooked me up. And uh, man, just kind of tasted like I was eating some cardboard. And uh, I could just barely smell the bacon and there was not, uh, wasn't the best smell there. 
So hopefully that comes back. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. And uh, like I mentioned, it's just kind of a kind of an eerie quiet spell at the moment after a couple days of some uh, pretty pretty good seismic unrest. Just have to uh, kind of see what uh, takes part here. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Please stay safe out there, everyone.